Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to be talking about how you can deploy a private instance of an open source model using a simple and cost effective way using Google Cloud, Olama and OpenWeb UI. We'll first talk about why do we need this in the first place? And then we'll talk about what we are going to be doing. And lastly, we'll make it real by talking about how we implement this using a step-by-step -step walkthrough from the Google Cloud console. Let's start with the why. We've all seen OSS models get better and more efficient over the last few months. But the challenge has been that when we use the public instances of these models, we have no control over our data as well as the security. Well, you could host these models locally, but that might not work for everyone if you don't really have a powerful GPU-enabled machine. And besides, if you want to have access to these models in an always-on way, that could be cumbersome. What if you had your own private instance of the open source model with a friendly UI in an always-on way and an easy-to-deploy manner? Thankfully, the solution we're going to be discussing is going to be extremely cost-effective too, thanks to the GPU-enabled Cloud Run. We all know and love Cloud Run for its ease of deployment, auto-scaling, and scale-to-zero functionality, which means you only pay for what you use. Now, imagine all the power of Cloud Run with GPUs. Yes, you heard that right. Cloud Run now has GPU support. So it's perfect for LLM inferencing. For now, we can enable each instance with an L4 NVIDIA GPU. The fact that it can scale to zero means you only pay for what you use. And it can auto-scale based on demand. Now, we'll be using Olama, which is an LLM inference server, and host it within Cloud Run. At this stage, you have two options. You can either choose to have the actual model weights stored within the Olama container, or you could mount the actual model weights from a Google Cloud storage bucket. Why would you want to choose each option? Well, there's a detailed matrix on why you would want to choose which. But in short, it depends on the size of the model. Okay, great. Now that we have this deployed, we have our own private instance of the open source model deployed but it's only accessible through an API call. Let's add a friendly UI component to this using OpenWeb UI. Now, we can deploy this using Cloud Run 2, and the great thing is it doesn't have to be GPU enabled, and it can scale independently of the backend API. Well, that's it. If all this sounds too complicated, believe me, it's not. You can get an end-to-end -end working solution in just a few minutes if you follow along so let's jump into the Google Cloud Console. All right, let's get started building this. We are now in the Google Cloud Console and step number one is we're gonna be building the artifact registry as well as the Docker container images that are required to make this application work. If you remember from before, there were two ways to deploy this. Either you store the model weights within the Olama container itself or you could store the model weights outside of the Olama container. And for this particular example, I'm going to show you how to store the model weights inside of the container. But if you're looking for instructions on the latter, look at the description below with the step-by-step -step instructions. All right, now that we're in the Google Cloud Console, let's go to the Google Cloud CLI. And I'm going to be running this command to create the artifact registry. So firstly, I'll give it a repository name. I'll call it Cloud Olama Cloud Run Demo. And then I'm going to be creating the artifact registry. So let me authorize this. Perfect. We see that the artifact registry is now created. So the next thing that we need to do is authorize my user credentials to have access on the artifact registry. So let me run this command. Perfect. So now let's create a directory for our Olama container. So the first thing that we're gonna do is create a container for Olama, which has the 
DeepSeq model weights. And that's going to be stored within the artifact registry. So let me create a folder. And now I'm going to create my Docker file. All right. At this point, I like to open the editor because it's a little easier to edit the Docker file through the editor option. You can see here that I have the Olama latest version. I'm pulling it. And then I also have the model set to DeepSeq R1 7 billion parameters. Now you can pick and choose any model. For this example, I'm using DeepSeq, but you could switch this with Gemma, Llama, or any other you know, models that are supported with Olama. You can also have multiple models being served together using OpenWebUI, which we'll talk about in just a bit. Now that we have this, I'm going to save this and go back to my terminal. I'm also going to set my project ID variable. Perfect. And lastly, we'll go ahead and trigger the Google Cloud build, which is going to create my container image. So let's give it a few minutes. This is going to be, uh, this is going to take a couple of minutes to complete. All right, perfect. Looks like the build is now complete. The next step that we're going to be doing is building out the open web UI container. It's going to be similar to how we built the Olama container, except this time we are not going to be using a Docker file to build it. We're just going to pull it as is because we're not really customizing anything. So let's go ahead and pull the Docker image. All right, great. The pull is now complete. Now what we're going to do is tag this Docker image and then publish it to our repository. So I've completed the tagging using the command and now I'm going to publish it. So all of these commands is also going to be listed in the description below. Perfect. Now we have completed the build of Open Web UI Container 2. So let's take a look at it. If you look at the artifact registry, I see both the containers, Open Web UI, as well as the Olama container, which contains the model weights for DeepSeq R1 7 billion parameters. This completes step one. Now we'll move on to step number two, which is creating the Cloud Run instance using Olama DeepSeq container. So that's extremely straightforward. We can do that from the UI. So if I go to Cloud Run, I'll be creating a service. And for the container image URL, I'm going to be selecting DeepSeq Olama, the latest version. For now, I'm going to allow unauthenticated requests, but in a production environment, you want to limit it by saying, hey, I only require authentication so that it's only accessible from the open web UI container. And in order to enable GPU, one of the requirements is to have instance-based billing, but you could scale but you could still scale it down to zero. All right, so let's go with this. And for the container port, I'm gonna choose 11434, which is the standard Olama port. And for resources, I'm going to go with 16 gigs and four CPUs, I attach a GPU. So this is where the magic of Cloud Run comes in because you now have auto scaling and scale to zero with the capabilities of GPU. So let's go ahead and create this. Great, we see that the deployment is now completed for the Olama container in Cloud Run. So let's go ahead and test this out using the API option. So I'm gonna run the Olama Cloud Run instance with the prompt, why is the sky blue with the model deep sea car one because it's already part of the container image. Let's try this again. Now this would take a few seconds for the instance to start up, uh, which is why, you know, we want to reduce the cold start time, which is why we are having the model weights in the container to speed up this time. Perfect. What you see here is a streaming response, which is why you're seeing this in this format. But what we're going to do next is plug this in with OpenWebUI, which is a friendly UI, which you're familiar with. 
with the same model in the back end. So let's get started on that. So I'm going to choose this. And then this time I'm going to go with Open Web UI. And I'm also going to say allow on authenticated invocations for now, but in a production environment, you would want to have authentication. So instant request based billing is fine for this. Uh, I'm going to choose the container port as default. I'm going to give it slightly higher memory and RAM, memory and CPU. So this looks good. We don't need GPUs for the web front end itself. The one additional thing that we need to do is let the open web UI know that this is the instance we are connecting our Olama instance to. And in order to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to look for this variable. We're going to add an environment variable called Olama base underscore URL and then type in paste the cloud run URL for the Olama model. Once that's done, you can go ahead and click create. All right, we now see the open web UI cloud run deployment complete too. I'm going to click on the URL. You see the open web UI portal. I'm going to click get started and I'm just going to say, give it an email address. Oops. This will be the name. So once I'm in the open web UI, you can see that now you have a UI which already has the DeepSeq R17 billion parameter that is hosted in a cloud run instance powered with GPU. So let's go ahead and ask it. Uh, tell me a fun fact about the Roman Empire. So DeepSeq being a thinking model, you can also see what's happening in its response when it's thinking uh, as well as the actual response. Now what's cool about open web UI is that you can also have multiple models at the same time loaded and you can plug in multiple models too using different instances of Olama and you can compare and contrast. You also have options to do retrieval augmented generation rag as well as upload your you know, images multimodal etc. So in summary what we discussed today is how do you deploy your own private instance of an open source model using Olama. Again, the open source model can be switched to any of the models that you prefer in an easy and cost-effective way using Cloud Run. Thank you for watching. I'll see you again in the next one.